Hi, Soledad. Very nice meeting you. I am Rocio, and I'm a therapist. So I wish we had the opportunity to meet in person, and this is a little bit different, uh, but I'm really looking forward to uh, get to know you and to work with you. I understand that your social worker um, thought that it was a good idea for us to meet. Mm -hmm. And well, today we, we just have the opportunity to get to know each other a little bit. So I'm going to start by just letting you know who I am. And then I would love to hear, um, you know, I would love to get to know you a bit, okay? So I, I'm a therapist who works with uh, children, adolescents, and families who have gone through a lot in their lives. I hope that you give me the opportunity to do that with you. Um, oftentimes when I actually work with adolescents, um, some of them do not have a clear idea about therapy and I'm, I'm wondering if you had any experiences with therapy before. I mean, I've heard of therapy, but I, I didn't really think it, would, it was something I'd be doing. I'm glad that you, um, you're you here. I'm glad that I, I can talk to you and, and, and see if, if this can be something that you would like to uh, continue, okay? So let me see. Can you tell me a little bit about you? I mean, there's not much to tell. I'm a girl whose mother went crazy. Hmm. Mm hmm Okay. All right. I spoke to your social worker for a bit since she thought that it was uh, important for you to talk to a therapist. And um, what your social worker told me is um, that your mom um, is in is in detention right now, and that you have been um, in a foster home for a couple of months already at least. So how is that for you? How, how is this big transition going? I mean, it's not fun, you know? I only get to talk to two of my siblings and the other two are like ghosts, so. Hmm, okay. So two of your siblings are with you and two others are staying someplace else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned that things have been hard since your mom, um, you, you mentioned that she went crazy. What does that mean? Can you tell me a bit about it? She was a fun, happy person and then she wasn't anymore. You know, it was like, she changed. Hmm, okay. It seems like there was a big change in how she related to you and how she related to to the rest of your siblings. Me and my mom were best friends. Like, mm -hmm. best friends. Like, no one could separate us. And then all of a sudden it was just like, you know, she just started hitting and screaming and scratching and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. That must have been really difficult. Yeah. I didn't know what I did. Yeah. Okay. I am wondering if that's also right now in your mind about, you know, what happened? Why did she change? I'm not quite sure if you're questioning yourself if there is something that you have done before she got sick, you know, like, literally everything that she did, I, I did with her, you know, like, thick as thieves, and one day she just, she just, she just went crazy on me. Hmm. So tell me a bit about what it was like before her behavior changed. What, what it was like for you to to spend time with her and to be with her. 
it was the greatest, you know, like, it's, you know, a lot of people don't have their parents in their lives. And yeah, I didn't have my dad, but I had my mom, you know, and mm -hmm. I had my siblings and we had each other. Yeah. Anything that we were doing, we made fun. Like there was not a single boring thing that we would do. There, there was no such thing. Cause trust me, if we said we were bored, my mom would find something for us to do. Mm. I see, I see. So I, I saw the smile there. So tell me a bit about, you know, the things that you enjoy doing with your siblings and your mom. Uh, we used to do everything together. We used to play hide and go seek. We used to, <laughs> my brother, like he would rage so hard if he ever lost a game that we would just let him win every single game. <laughs> like mm -hmm. we would see him because his hiding spots were terrible. We'd mm -hmm. see him and we'd act like we didn't just so you know he'd feel good in the end. Aww. I miss them so much. Yeah. My mom, she used to tell us all the time, you know, you guys got to get together, your siblings, your siblings, you got to get together. And we would mm -hmm. argue, <laughs> we would argue, but it would, it's stupid arguments, you know, like kid stuff. And my mom always knew how to fix things. Like she was the problem solver in the house, taught us games, mm -hmm. baked with us, told us to pray, you know, all the good things. I just feel like it was taken away and nobody can tell me why. Hmm. I don't know, I haven't met your mom, but I'm actually wondering if, if she got sick. I think she got sick. Yeah. Because my mom, she had, my mom had a smile no one could forget. You know, like you'd see her smile and instantly you just felt better about every bad thing that was possibly going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just disappeared, you know? Yeah. It was like yeah. she slowly became less and less herself. I can see you, you know, you, you have this wisdom and um, insightfulness about what happened to your mom that is actually remarkable, trying to understand that. I'm wondering, you know, if you if you know where you got this wisdom and, and insightfulness from, I mean. Her, she was the greatest. Like, I don't understand how someone who can do so many good things can can just lose it all like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And also, Lida, um, there are some things that are hard to understand, you know, when people get sick, especially when loved ones get sick. You know, it's, it's a little easier whenever we have this, um, when loved ones get physically sick. Many times we can really see it, right? We can see a black and blue, we can see a broken bone, or we can see something that happened to us physically a lot easier than when we get sick mentally, right? When we have some mental illness and Again, I haven't met your mom. I really wish that I, um, I'll have the opportunity in the future to meet her. But I'm, I'm actually wondering if, if that's what's happening to her. If she got sick mentally and she wasn't she able just, to stay with you. She went crazy on me and yeah. I don't know why. You know, no one's been mm -hmm. able to tell me why. Mm -hmm. We were best mm -hmm. friends, you know, like so close. Like mm -hmm. if there was something going on, why why couldn't she just tell me, you know, and maybe I, w I would have been able to help her, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like that, that's that was what happened to your mom. And you know, um, just like you are here with me and, and you are, um, starting therapy, there are many things that your mom can do in order to also get the support that she needs to overcome her mental illness. So those are things that can be worked out. I hope that you know that there is nothing that you had done that made that happen for her, right? Just like, you know, there are physically illness, illnesses that happen to us and we have no control over the same thing, mental illness. 
there's a lot right now you're you're dealing with and I, I see that you know just like I said before that you're very insightful that you are um, you're concerned about your mom that you're missing her so you care and um, even though this must be very difficult you know the fact that you you also hold those amazing memories with your family makes me think that you know they are very very important to you they are you're a great big sister I can tell that those kids are my life <laughs> mm. Mm. If there was one thing that I remembered the most, it was my mom telling me not to give up when things got hard. Hmm. And I just feel like she gave up. Oh. It was like her light just started to fade away, you know? She was, she was this person that no matter how bad you were feeling, she could make you feel better. Mm-hmm. And... Man, to have someone take away her light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so let I see you, you know, maybe trying to understand a few things and also grieving. grieving. I just, I don't get why me. Why did she go so crazy on me, you know? Mm -hmm. Like we were best friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not being able to understand what happened to her. Mm. You're talking about the moment where the police was called. Yeah, yeah. I, I should have done more, you know, like I should have tried to stop them from taking her, but I just mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. You know, the little that I know about that situation, I think that you did the best that you could under the circumstances, and it wasn't really on you. No, you were not the one that called the police, right? And nobody knew. I mean, I think that people were expecting that your mom would have gotten the help that she needed. And it didn't work that way. That doesn't mean that she's not getting the help that she needed now. So we need to do a little bit more of um, finding out what's happening. And that's something, that's something that I can... Um, I, I will see what I can do, okay? So in the meantime, if we can do something that can help you to feel reconnected with your mom and your siblings, I'm wondering if there is a possibility for you to start writing letters to them. So for your siblings, writing letters is not gonna take so long, right? The mailing will get to their houses really quickly. For your mom, it's gonna be a little bit um, different, but I don't, I don't think that it will take a, a long time. Um, so what do you think about that? Yeah, I, w I would love to write to my siblings. You know, um, the, my two youngest siblings, Noel and Marie, they actually live in a foster homes where their parents don't really like them on internet or phones or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been able to contact them. And I think writing would be a really good way to be able to contact them. All right. And you know, you can actually write to them. Um, you can draw something. You can help, you know, uh, your little brother also send you something um, back by just he can color something and he can tell you a very short story that maybe your sibling can help him with. Tell me Noel and what is her name? Marie. Marie, okay. So that would be a good way for now to keep in contact with them until we figure something else. All right? Okay. okay. You know, you are a young woman who who is really trying her very best to do things for her family. Thank you. I'm wondering, Soledad, you know, if, if um, you're also trying to do things for you. I'm trying. 
trying, but I don't feel like I deserve to do anything for myself right now. Mm. Okay. Okay. Tell me a bit about that. I mean, where does that come from? Why do I get to be happy if my siblings aren't? If my mm. mom isn't? Is that something that was um, in your mind when you tried to hurt yourself last week? It was like, you know, like, for me, it felt like there was a million different things happening at once, and none of them were good, you know. They were, it was your siblings are getting moved, you know. You're not going to be able to stay with each other. Two of you guys can stay, but, you know, not all of them, you know. And you still get your mom mm -hmm. taken away, too, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It so, just felt like nothing was going to get better. Does it feel like that? Now too, that yeah, a little feel bit. Feel that it, nothing is all right. What do you think might help to change things a bit? I just I need to see them. I need to to reconnect. And I need to have a family again. You would like to connect. I need a peace of mind. I need to be able to sleep at night. I need something to hold on to. All right. Obviously, I want to make sure that you're safe, right? That um, that we can, in our sessions, we can sort of think about things that you need, things that, that you would like, um, also things that will make you feel better, and, um, and things that will keep you from hurting yourself. So... I need to ask you if, if, if you have any plans to hurt yourself now. Um, no. So, all right. Do you know what to do? If the same sort of feelings come back to you, who to reach out to? Let's try to figure out a plan where you can find the support that you need to prevent that from happening again. Anything that can be helpful? Anything that helps me, you know, get to sleep at night. Anything that helps me better myself then. All right. So that's something that um, you're struggling with too, uh, not being able to sleep. Since when, Soledad? Since I was a kid, you know, I've, I used to get these nightmares and um, I would wake up and it would just feel like my chest was really tight and I couldn't breathe. And like, it mm. really felt like, you know, the world was gonna end. The only mm -hmm. the only person that was able to calm me down was my mom. Hmm, and how did she calm you down? Uh, there was this this song that she used to sing to me. Um, do you know Tink Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the nursery yeah. rhyme? Uh -huh. She used to sing that to me, but she would sing it to me in Spanish. Every time oh. she sang it, I fell right back to sleep. Hmm, so a nice song with a lovely memory. That's really neat. And that calmed you down? Yeah. Ever since, you know, like everything happened, the nightmares have just been coming back. And I'm, I I can still kind of hear her, you know, in the back of my head singing the song, but but I can't, I can't sing in Spanish and I can't get the words right. Is that something that you think that you can bring back before you go to sleep? every night. You know, I'm not too good with Spanish words, but I could look around for some help. Okay, all right. That would be great. And I, I can help you with some of the Spanish words too. Um, and I'm also wondering when you write to your mom, maybe you could ask for those words. I know your mom is not with you, but every time that you think of her every time that you think of you know the fun activities that she did with you and your siblings every time that you remember her smile all the amazing things that you have already shared with me i think that you you bring her back so maybe before you go to sleep you could actually try to 
remember that song, sing the melody to you. Yeah. And and sort of bring back those nice memories that brought some smiles. Yeah. To you. You also mentioned praying that and I'm wondering if you pray with your mom or um as a family. I pray all the time. Okay, all right. Do you have any favorite prayers? Is there anything in particular that maybe... I just, every time I talk to God, I try to tell him, you know, take, you know, take your time with everyone, you know, just make sure that there's enough blessings for my siblings before you come back around the table for me. Hmm. Hmm. You're a really very caring person and you're a great caretaker. Thank you. So I'm wondering if, um, because you are an amazing caretaker, if if also, um, if you can let me know what are some of the things that you can do in order to take care of yourself and to also advocate for yourself? I just have to, I think I just have to keep in mind that, you know, it's not over. And Mm -hmm. I still have a chance to talk to my siblings. You know, it might not happen as fast as I wish it would, but it can still happen. So reminding yourself that it's not over, that you're not giving up, that you will reconnect with your siblings and your mom. Um, I am available, so you can uh, contact me. And this week I'm going to also start um, contacting a few people that were that I can um, just to check what are some of the next steps? Is there anything else, Soledad? Not really. I'm just really glad, you know, I got to talk to you and I I got to take a breather from my own head for a minute. All right. I am very glad to get to know you a bit and I'm really looking forward to um, keep getting to know you more and, you know, we will work together on, on things and um, really looking forward to see you next week. Same here. All right. Take care. You All too. Right.